the shadows, bound for the gallows, a dead man walking, to love came calling, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, six feet under. everyone and welcome to our online service today. We are super happy that you joined us today. Um, my name is Leah Broomfield and I work at the church and we have a few things that are coming up that you might want to know about. We have a really busy week coming up this week. So on Tuesday night at 6 p.m. the high school youth are going to meet at the church for dinner, pizza party and some other fun things. We're going to go on a little adventure and we're done at 8 30. So that's Tuesday the 26th. Then on Wednesday you don't want to miss this uh, the Sherbinos are holding another um, bonfire night. So just bring a lawn chair. There'll be lots of s'mores. We'll have a, a great time meeting new friends and uh, bring a friend too. So that would be great. Just bring your lawn chair and come on out. And that's anytime after seven o'clock. So, and that's on five Catherine street in Paris. Okay. So five Catherine street. And then on Thursday night, 5 30 PM, uh, we are having another community dinner. So come on out to that as well. Doors open at five, bring a friend along. And on, uh, we want you to mark this on your calendars because we are super excited that we can once again go back to the park. So Lions Park on August the 7th at 1030. What we'll do is we'll have our uh, service outside. So again, bring your friends, whoever wants to come, uh, lawn chairs. And after that, we'll be having lunch. So we'll provide the hamburgers and hot dogs. Uh, please bring any salads or any drinks that you want. And that'll be a super fun time. Okay, so that's all from me at the moment. So why don't we go ahead and worship together this morning? Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you that you are with us. And we just ask that you would speak to us through your word. And as we sing to you, we just want to give praise from our hearts. In your name, amen. Okay, enjoy the service, everyone.
Well, hello, everyone. Um, really excited to be able to share with you this morning. And uh, I've been watching and, and listening uh, with interest to Joel's uh, messages over the last few weeks on navigating life. And so hopefully today I can add a little bit to that conversation. I want to start by just asking you a simple question. Do you feel like the world's getting a little angrier uh, of late? Uh, whether it's over the last couple of years or even over the last 10 years. There just seems to be a lot of noise out there. Um, a lot of, the, sort of the spirit of the age seems to be one that's very critical, seems to be um, some crudeness, some pessimism. Um, social media doesn't help that. It seems like it's a platform for people to, to make a lot of complaints and to be, be loud with their complaints. And, and I wonder... Sometimes if, if that affects us, if that can get to us and start to have an impact on us, whether we participate in it or not. Um, you know, Joel's been speaking about various things over the last number of weeks about navigating life, um, how to deal with adversity, how to deal with success, um, how to forgive, how to handle our wealth, um, entrusting God, making good decisions. And these are all really vital, vital topics for the times that we live in. And so this morning, I want to go in a little bit of a, a different direction um, to uh, maybe help add a little bit of a foundation to, to the great messages that Joel's been sharing. I want to talk about the place of awe and wonder in our lives. Um, it's probably not something you think about very often. It's probably not something that uh, is top of mind. But I really believe that it's actually quite a foundational uh, influence. It needs to be a foundational influence in our lives. We all need to live with a healthy dose of awe and wonder. And I want to start really by uh, asking you to think about um, when was the last time you were amazed at something? That something really stopped you in your tracks and caused you to, to you know, observe it, to um, you know, take it in, to try and process it, to really help you, uh, you know, to, to help you understand, excuse me, understand it. Um, and if we were live, I'd get you to give me some responses. I'll probably do that on Sunday when we share the same message. But uh, I want you to think about it. I, I'll share a little, uh, some of the things that I know have done that for me in the last little while. Um, we usually go, uh, my boys and I and some of our grand grandsons go on a canoe trip every year. And I love getting a site, a campsite in the back country of Algonquin Park where the, the rocks slope down into the water. And it's, it's great on a clear night to lie on the rocks and just stare up at the sky. And most of us live in places that are pretty bright at night and uh, you can't really see the stars. But I, I love laying on the rocks, looking up at the sky and just looking at the stars and watching the mo literally watching the movement uh, of the stars. Uh, that, that's just something that I've, uh, over the years, that's just been a place of amazement for me. Um, it, but again, wanting you to consider, what, when, how often do we have those experiences? When do we um, have those times in our lives where we, where we are amazed, where, we, where, we, where things are they're just sort of cause us to stop and ponder? A um, couple of, I'm going to give you a couple of quotes here from some guys who I think were pretty smart. Uh, one from Albert Einstein. Uh, he said this, the fairest thing we can experience is the mysterious. It's the fundamental emotion which stands at the cradle of true art and true science. He who knows it not and can no longer wonder, no longer feels amazement, is as good as dead. G.K. Chesterton said, we're perishing for want of wonder, not for want of wonders. And I wonder if, <laughs> if that's something that all of us um, are struggling with. We live such busy lives. Most of our lives are pretty programmed from start to finish. Uh, even, even in getting ready to do this video, we were scrambling around getting things ready and, 
and um, it seems like there's this one thing after another and, and our hurried schedule and the demands of our of our jobs and our possessions and the relationships that we have and can often wear on us after a while. I mean, they may not even really realize it. Um, let me share a couple of thoughts with you on some of the words that we commonly use, but maybe we'll take on a little bit of a new meeting because I hope that once, when we're done today, we'll, you'll have a better sense of, of how to cultivate this, this sense of wonder in our lives. Maybe it needs to be reclaimed. I know for me, I have to be intentional about that. So here's, here's a couple of things. We, the word awesome is used constantly um, in dialogue these days. People say, you know, this is awesome, that's awesome, you're awesome. You know, that, that drink was awesome, that food was awesome. And let me, let me give you the dictionary definition of the word awesome. Causing or inducing awe. Okay, well, what's awe? It's, it's inspiring an overwhelming feeling of reverence, admiration, and fear. It probably has a little bit more, more uh, meaning than sometimes we give it. We use that word so often. Here's another one. The meaning of the word mystery. In fact, the meaning of the word mystery as it's used in the Bible, one of the, one of the ways of expressing it, one of, the, one of the meanings of the word is to shut the mouth. To shut the mouth. Some, I think there's some, a message in there for us. that Sometimes we need to stop talking and need to, be, need to close our mouths and just take in what's happening around us. Another word that we use, the word wonder, is, the dictionary definition, is to be filled with admiration, amazement, or awe, uh, or to marvel at something. And I want to suggest to you that those qualities, that ability to take in the, the marvels, the wonders around us, are really fundamental to helping us navigate life, to helping us make good decisions, to helping us handle our wealth, to helping us handle adversity and success, because it speaks to something bigger than ourselves. Some, and it kind of puts us in a, in a position or in a posture that allows us to make good decisions and wise decisions. Well, you, you, you may think of the Bible um, as simply being a book of do's and don'ts or a history book or a book of, uh, you know, of the uh, the life of Jesus and, and things like that. And you'd be right, there are all those things as part of the Bible, but it's actually interesting to, to see how much of the Bible speaks of the place of awe, amazement, of wonder, uh, of mystery. And so I'm going to share a few verses here with you. Um, one of them will be a little bit longer, but hopefully it'll, uh, it, it'll be worth it. The verse, there's a couple of verses come from the book of Proverbs, which we've been focusing on over the last number of weeks. The first ones really come, and these verses have always intrigued me, from Proverbs 25, 2. It says, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search a matter out is the glory of kings. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search a matter out is the glory of kings. Well, why is it the glory of God to conceal things? And why is it the glory of kings to search a matter out? And what, what is that glory? I think there's something in there for us to learn that, that actually God has designed things. God has his way of drawing us in, of causing us to seek him, is to conceal things. And part of our, uh, you know, part of the relationship that we have with God is to actually seek him, to seek out the things that he's done, to seek out the things that he plans and to seek out the things that please him. Um, there's another verse, a couple of verses from Proverbs chapter 30 by a guy named Agar who wrote a bunch of sayings. He, this, this is not from uh, Solomon, but it's from the book of Proverbs. And he's, he's telling us what's, what amazes him. He says, there's three things amaze me. No four things that I, I'll never understand. How an eagle flies so high in the sky. How a snake glides on a rock. How a ship navigates the ocean. And this one I thought was interesting, why, why adolescents act the way they do. Um, interesting things that amazed him, but, but he was expressing some things that he had pondered and wondered what they meant. What, how, how did they function? What are the ways that they, they uh, what makes them do the things that they do? And the last one here I want to share with you is from Psalm 139. And it's a Psalm of David, who was Solomon's father. And I'm going to read quite a few verses here uh, because it, it's actually a, a psalm of amazement, a psalm of wonder, and a psalm of uh, awe 
of who God is and how he has made us. So let me, let me read this for you. You've searched me, O Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Listen to verse 6. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, and if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me, even the darkness even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. And listen to these last few verses. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I, made, when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. For your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. David is just expressing his amazement not only about how God interacts with, uh, with us, um, God's omnipresence, his, his knowledge of who we are and uh, of, of all the things that we, we do, but also about the amazement that he has of his own body, of how he was formed and the way that God foreknew him. So how does this all play out for us? What's, what, is, what is the application for us today? Um, how does this idea of having a sense of wonder and amazement really impact our day, uh, the days that we're living in? It's not like you can just sort of go out and get yourself some amazement. It's not something you buy off the shelf. It's not an experience that you can just sort of order on Amazon and get and, and live it out. There's something about it that is environmental. There's something about it that you have to cultivate. What's interesting to me, as I was doing a little bit of study on this, is there's actually a lot of information, a lot of studies done on the, the, the physical health benefits of living with a sense of awe and wonder. Um, it's, it's actually quite remarkable, the, the, the impact it can have on your physical health. It's, it's remarkable the impact it can have on your, your emotional health. And it's, an, it's remarkable the impact it can have on your relational health. Because it positions us, it postures us to think, uh, put to, to understand the, the scope of our lives and that there are things that are bigger than us. There are things that actually are more important than us. And there are things that are eternal, which causes us to make good decisions, which causes us to understand how to handle adversity, how to handle success. And so how do we, how do we cultivate this? How do we uh, create a, a, an environment where we can understand, where we can take in those, those um, wonders around us and allow them to influence us. Well, let me, let me share a few things with you. First of all, wonder needs intentionality. Um, it doesn't just happen. Like I said, it's not just something you can go out and buy. You can just, you're not gonna go out and get yourself some wonder at the store. You have to cultivate it. You have to be intentional about it. Um, I, I like to use the expression, take the long way home. Uh, there's the song that I like called, uh, I'll take the, I take the long way home. And sometimes we have to take the long way home. We have to be intentional. Um, there's this thing that's talked about in scripture that I'm still learning and I'm still trying to get my head around called Sabbath. Uh, taking time to rest, taking time to slow down, taking time to uh, be uh, focused on who we are in relation to who God is. And it's all about slowing down. It's all about being intentional. And so one of the ways that we cultivate the ability to, to, to uh, take in the wonders around us is by being intentional, by doing the things that need to be done in order to be able to slow down and receive from God what he wants to say to us. And this works, this really works against the day and age we live in. We have to be very intentional about it. 
The second thing we need wonder is that wonder needs gratitude. Um, you know, our world spends a lot of time telling us the things that we need. They, it spends a lot of time telling us the things that if we don't have them, there's something missing in our lives. It, it's it's um, most of what we see on, in social media and on television and, and the advertising around us is trying to create in us a sense of, of need so that we pursue these things. And some of that's all right. Some of it is are things that we genuinely need. But often it leaves us with this sense of, of want, that we're missing something. And it causes us to lack, lack having a sense of gratitude. And so I, we have to be, again, intentional about recognizing just the goodness of God in our lives. Seeing the things that he has provided for us. Seeing the way that he has blessed us. Seeing the way that he desires to bless us. So that we can live lives of gratitude. And as live, in living lives of gratitude, then we're able to be more uh, aware of the good things around us, the wonders that we see every day that are right in front of us. The third thing that, that wonder needs is humility. Um, I've touched on this a little already, um, but it really is about understanding uh, that there's things that are bigger than us. Um, this idea of j just being um, not not it's uh, humility is not about thinking less of yourselves it's just thinking more about others it's be, thinking more about the impact that that we may be having on others understanding how how our lives are impacting theirs it's it's not uh, self abasement it's just self forgetfulness we don't necessarily our default is not to think of ourselves first but to think of others around us because that will place us in a position where we actually then begin to see the wonder of relationships, the wonder of the people around us. Um, C.S. Lewis talks about the, you know, that you've never says that you've never met a mere mortal. Every person that you've ever met is an eternal soul, and God loves them, and Jesus died for them, and God's desire is that they would know Him. And so, understanding that, having that sense of humility, that understanding that that the, the individuals that we come in contact with are loved by God and important to him, and God actually desires that we uh, interact with them in such a way that we, we orient them or, or, or allow them to see God's grace flowing through us. And the last thing that, humil that wonder needs is hope. Um, you know, I'm gonna read, let me read a verse for, uh, for you from... Um, Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is, the, is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. It comes from Hebrews chapter 11. It's often described as the great faith chapter, but it really is the great hope chapter. Hope in that we, in, in, this, in that eternity, hope that we have a place with God in eternity. Um, and that gives us that changes our perspective, that allows us to interact with the world, to see the world around us differently when we see it through the lens of eternity. And so I want to have this big finish now, because all of what I've said up to now, you might be thinking, well, yeah, I can go out and I can look around and try to be a little bit more aware of the wonders around me. But I want to leave, finish with what I would call the wonder, the great wonder, or the wonder of wonders. And the wonder of wonders is this. And it's the one that should change our lives. It should transform us. And that is the wonder and the mystery of God's love for us. That God would actually uh, send his son to die for us in order that we might know salvation, in order that we might be reconciled to God. Um, for me, that is the wonder of wonders. If you've never experienced that, um, that may be still yet on the horizon for you. And I would encourage you to, uh, you know, to continue to seek God to understand that. Uh, but the mystery of God's love for us as expressed in, his, in giving his son for us is really the wonder of wonders. I, there's a verse from um, where Jesus is talking uh, about, really about eternity. And in John chapter 14, verse two, he says this, my fa in my father's house, there are many rooms. If, you, if it were not so, I would have told you, and I'm going there to prepare a place for you. I live with an understanding that in God's house, there's a room that has my name on it. 
and I hope you do too. When I was when when our kids were young, we had little name plates that we made up, and that you know that were hung on the door of the room. And this is Tim's room. This is Jason's room. This is Nadine's room. This is Jessica's room. This is Alicia's room. And I always often think of those name plates, those tag or those little name tags, and think there's rooms in God's house with our names on it. And that is the wonder of wonders. That is that is the great mystery that God would actually love us and give his son for us and so it it's not just the physical realm that we see the wonders it's actually in the spiritual realm and those are the greatest of all and those are the eternal ones and so I want to finish today by just simply praying for us that God would help us not to allow the edginess the the um angst that seems to be in our, the world around us these days to harden us, to cause us to close down, to cause us to try to shelter ourselves, to, to uh, withdraw from the world, but that we would m enter in and engage with the world with confidence and begin to see God at work in ways that maybe we never have before. See God at work in our lives in ways that we never have before by being open and posturing ourselves to seeing the wonders around us. Uh, both the physical realm and the spiritual realm. So let me, let me pray for us in this way. So Father, thank you for the fact that you love us. Thank you that you've demonstrated that through your son, Jesus. And even though it's almost impossible for us to take that in, even if we can get, gain a small inkling as to what that means, what that meant for you, and what that means for us, uh, that the amazement of that, the wonder of wonders that you loved us and gave yourself for us uh, so that we might have that place with you for eternity um, is, is, should fuel our wonder for a lifetime. Lord, I pray that as we, as we ponder the things that have shared today, that we would maybe just begin to have a sense of you're, you're speaking to us, uh, that our eyes would be opened to see the things around us that maybe are there in plain sight, but we've been missing them because we've been busy or because we've been angry or because we've been distraught over something and begin to see those things that really uh, are really given by you, that are provided by you, that are, are the blessings of the world around us that you've created and you've called us to participate into and enjoy. And so, God, I ask for that for those who are listening. I ask that, that the, uh, their, their sense of awe and wonder and mystery and adventure would increase and that that would, that would make a difference in everyday life, in their relationships, in how they work, and how they handle life. So I pray for that in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Jesus, the only one who could ever say. 